Attorney, Disclosure of Ex parte Communications, Ms. Hall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If anyone present today wishes to speak or give any testimony on any quasi-judicial matters, you will need to be sworn in looking at the agenda that's tab numbers four through seven. If you would please stand at this time and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Council, if there's been any ex parte communications, now would be the appropriate time to disclose. Seeing that, I'll um, I met with Bash and about the Ukraine's great book. That would be tab number seven. And there's, as well on tab number seven, I received certain several letters and communications as well regarding that project. Second thing on the great book. Second I don't believe I have any. Back to you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Holt. <clears throat> Which brings us to reading of all ordinances and resolutions into the record. Ms. Novak. Thank you, Mayor. We have four ordinances and one resolution. Ordinance 2020-06 an ordinance of the City of Tiberias amending the boundaries of the city by annexing approximately 119.57 acres of land located at 27521. State Road 19, rezoning said property from Lake County Agricultural District A to City of Tiberias Residential Single Family RSF2 and City of Tiberias Wetlands Preservation Area WPA, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2020-07, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias, Florida, amending the Tiberias Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change in future land use designation on approximately 119.57 acres of land located at 27521 State Road 19 from County Rural Transition to City Low Density, LOW, and Wetland and Conservation, CONS, providing for separability and conflicts, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2020-08 and Ordinance of the City of Tiberias, amending the boundaries of the city by annexing approximately 1.72 acres of land located at the northwest corner of State Road 19 and Slim Haywood Avenue, rezoning said property from Lake County Agriculture District A to City of Tiberias Highway Commercial C2, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2020-09, an ordinance of the City of Tiberias Board amending the Tiberias Comprehensive Plan, Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change of future land use designation on approximately 1.72 acres of property from county urban medium density to city commercial CON for property generally located at the northwest corner of State Road 19 and Slum Haywood Avenue, providing for severability and complex and providing for an effective day and resolution 2020-10, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Tiberias for vacating a portion of the 30-foot unnamed road lying north of Lot 28 and Lot 40 as shown in the plat of land of Lane and Jackson and others as recorded in Plat Book 7, page 52, public records of Lake County, Florida, and releasing the easement as reported in OR Book 1362, pages 1695 through 1700, public records for Lake County, Florida, subject to the rules and regulations ordained by the City of Tourist Council, providing for an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Novak. Which brings us to consent agenda. Anyone want to pull anything for the consent agenda? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries by this year. Which brings us to resolutions. Tap 3. Uh, resolution 2020 10, the Palmer property, vacation of unnamed right of way, and release of easement at the northwest corner of Slim Haywood Avenue and State Road 18. Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this request is for a property that we'll be reviewing in a moment uh, for annexation. The request
request is to vacate a portion of the 30-foot unnamed road as shown on the plat of, plat of land of Lane and Jackson and others lying north of Slim Haywood Avenue, west of State Road 19, and to release the ingress-egress easement in favor of the city of Tavares that's recorded in uh, Lake County public records. The owner of the property that includes the portions of the right-of-way of the plats is proposing commercial development. Uh, prior to the development, the owner must vacate any public interest in the property. Uh, the city no longer requires an easement across the property as, as a result of the construction of Slim Haywood Avenue. And uh, city staff has verified with the utility department that no public utilities are in that right-of-way. The portions of the road are unopened and unused, and this vacate and release of easement will remove the city's public interest and allow the applicant to pursue options to secure title to the property. And the only thing I would add is that the, that right of way went to the next property, to the next property, went all the way down. And we have uh, vacated it over time as requested, uh, and there's this last remaining piece. Thank you, Mr. Drew. <clears throat> July 16th meeting, the Planning and Zone Board voted unanimously to recommend approval, and staff recommends approval of resolution 2020-10. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. And I haven't received any requests to speak from the public. And see no one indicating that would you like to speak? Please come forward and state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Oh, yeah, I'm Robert Sweet. My name is Peter Pensa. I'm an AICP certified planner with Data Group for the planners, engineers, and surveyors on the project. The staff has done a good job summarizing that. i just like to add to that to note that this right away is separated from Slum Haywood by approximately 30 feet, so it's not immediately adjacent. Um, it, there are no utilities located within that area. It's not needed for uh, any future expansion of Slum Haywood. Um, and if you look at the maps that are in the staff report, you can see, uh, for example, our property to the west of us this, our property already uh, extends further, has a larger right-of-way width uh, because we're at the intersection in order to accommodate both existing utilities that are there at that intersection with the ability to accommodate turn lanes in the future. I hope that I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience want to speak? I'm going to close public input. Cancel. Do you have any questions or comments? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to ordinances. Uh, we have not at first reading today, so we'll move on to second reading. Uh, Tab 4, Ordinance 2020-06, Green Property, Annexation and Rezoning, 119.57 acres, located at 27521 State Road 19, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. The subject property is 119.57 acres, located on State Road 19. The land consists of multiple parcels and includes an existing single-family home. The subject property is presently zoned as a county agricultural district, and the applicant is proposing that the property be annexed and rezoned as city residential single-family RSF2. The exact location of wetlands will be determined in the field, and all wetlands greater than one acre in size be designated as wetland preservation area. The survey submitted uh, by the applicant indicates uh, approximately 66.20 acres of wetland, and that's about 55% of the property. Any wetland that's proposed to be impacted by development is subject to Florida Department of Environmental Protection mitigation requirements. Uh, the, pro the proposed zoning of residential single family is compatible with the surrounding zoning the property is in close proximity to existing low-density single-family residential subdivisions that are already within the city limits of Tavares. Uh, the applicant at this time envisions developing the property as a residential subdivision consisting of approximately 133 lots with a minimum width of 60 feet and a minimum square footage of 6,500 square feet as required by the RSF2 zone. Uh, the annexation has been reviewed per the city's policy and uh, no undue uh, negative fiscal impact is implicated. Uh, the environmental assessment submitted indicates the presence of uh, protected species, gopher tortoises, and uh, state permitting will be required to relocate those prior to development. Uh, no other adverse conditions have been uh, indicated by the environmental assessment. 
The traffic study submitted does not indicate an impact to the level of service of surrounding roadways. There will be increased trips, obviously. Uh, the report recommends installation of a northbound left turn lane and a southbound right turn lane on State Road 19 at the subdivision entrance. Uh, the applicant has supplied to Lake County School for capacity reservation, and the city is currently processing uh, a request for a comprehensive plan change for the for the property for Lake County rural transition, changing to city of Tiberi's low density. At the July 16th meeting, the Planning and Zoning Board voted unanimously to recommend approval of Ordinance 2020-06, and staff recommends that City Council moves to approve Ordinance 2020-06. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Is the applicant present? Please state your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Good afternoon, Chuck Hyatt, Booth Ernst Strong Hyatt, 902 Moore Sinclair Avenue here in Tavares. Just wanted to say real quick, the, the open space on this project, or not, the uplands, you know, and not the wetlands, when you relay that to the 133 lots, we're basically two, two and a half units per acre. Um, also, Mike had mentioned DOT with the turn lanes. We are in negotiation right now with DOT to try to accommodate what they're actually going to require when we come in with pre plat assuming you guys approve this. I'll be answering answer any questions, happy to answer any questions that you may have after everybody's done. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thanks. <clears throat> and uh, Mayor, just for the record, um, you all received some letters from uh, various people, I think three or four of them. We have them. They were not asked to be read into the record. Um, Obviously, if you want them read in the record, we could. Um, or you could take uh, comments first, and if you want those letters read, we can read them. I just wanted you to know that we do have those letters if you want them read. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask you to your speak to speak, and then we'll address the letters next. Um, first, Mr. Barry. Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Good afternoon, Council. Jay Scott Berry, Executive Director of the Tiberius Chamber of Commerce, 300 East Main Street. Um, I am here representing over 300 members, and not just our members, but um, I like to say I'm representing a lot of the businesses here in Tiberius. And the addition of, three, of 133 homes and families into our city, and the impact that that will be on our businesses, and the growth that we can see through that is just exponential and a very, very exciting good thing. So I'm urging you to approve this um, on behalf of all the people that are still in their businesses right now working and would benefit over the years from the addition of these people. Plus, uh, I've reviewed the plan. I've met with Mr. Fitzgerald. Um, the securing of, I think it's 60% that remain into the environmental is very encouraging. So it's a really awesome project that we want to support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Which brings me to Mr. Gonzalez. Can you please come forward, say your name and address, and we have three minutes. All real estate people. Uh, thank you. My name is Rick Gonzalez. I'm an office at 339 West Alfred. I'm a commercial land broker, and I've studied this property many times over the last few years. I think it's a perfect thing for this, bringing more people to town. It's really going to be an incentive to uh, just bring more people to town. It's a good thing. And I was actually surprised that there was expressions of opposition to it, the way they've done this plan. So, I'm also a member of LIP 100, which is a group of business people that are trying to make it kind of better. And as one of their representatives, I can't represent them today, but I am a member there, and it's, they're feeling awesome that this is a great project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, which Ms. Holt, just so you're aware of that, helps with my recollection. I did get the email from the LIP 100 for disclosure purposes. Sorry. Um, Mr. Jordan, could you please say your name and address in three minutes? Great, thank you. I'm John Reardon, Director of Marketing and Community Relations for Community Health Centers at 212 East Main Street here in downtown Tavares. Uh, over 130 new homes mean new households contributing to the Tavares tax base. It means short-term trades with building jobs and long-term prosperity. New households spending money not only in our downtown but in our county. Um, it means future local employees for our business community. 
We know that keeping the millage rate low is a yearly battle. Uh, new homes contributing their fair share goes a long way to reaching that goal and help us achieve a lower tax rate. Uh, let's continue that success by approving quality projects on private property would otherwise do nothing for the city while vacant, paying no taxes to the city yet being located in the city. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Which brings me to Ms. Belton. Please come forward, say your name and address, and you have three minutes. I'm Tracy Belton. Address is 525 West Main Street, Tavares. I'm here. I'm also a member of Lake 100 who is in favor of this project. I did a little bit of research about availability of homes in the Tiberias city limits at the present time that are available. Between 150 and 250,000 are only 33. Between 250,000 and 350,000 are only 24. So there's a definite need for us to increase the number of residential homes in this area. You have the hospitals going jointly to try to increase the number of nurses that we have for our hospitals. They're going to be looking for housing and we want them in Tiberias increase our tax base, increase our residential homes in this, in this community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bellamy. And, um, Council, uh, Mr. Yoakum, would you like to come forward? Please say your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Vance Yoakum, 12619 Milwaukee Avenue. I used to drive down Highway 19 quite a bit, and 561, and, uh, Nobody here, everybody wants all these properties to bring business to you. They're all downtown interests, real estate interests. And yet nobody talks about the traffic problems. And you, there was a bare mention that there's talk about trying to get an extra turn lane in, but nothing concrete. And I just am amazed that you guys still go ahead and you approve these properties. Everybody here wants these properties in. But they don't care apparently about traffic conditions and the intersections and everything else. And I think you need to start standing up. You know, there's two county commissioners that just got thrown out, uh, and uh, probably some people in this room were involved in it. Um, but uh, the big thing that they made with some kind of nasty mailers was that they increased taxes. And uh, that's the other issue, is that uh, you better warn those folks how much their taxes are going to be when they move in. Uh, so please fix the traffic first. Don't keep approving these. Uh, step up to the gate, you know, because otherwise you're going to be known as the traffic-clogged city of the county. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Younger. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak to part of those public input? Please come forward, say your name, and after us, you have three minutes. My name is Michael O'Connor. I live at 4902 Waters Gate Drive in Tavares. I'm up here as a citizen of Tavares and lived here just about approximately two years. This is a growing area, and we do want the area to grow. We do want development, but we don't want runaway development. We want it to grow responsibly, and we want it to grow reasonably. So we ask you to please take those things into consideration. What I would like to ask right now is just a little bit of clarification. On the map here, you show the proposed development. There's areas in blue on the map. Are those the wetland areas to which you were referring to earlier? Please ask all your questions and I'll have him answer your questions once your three minutes is over. Okay. I'll be ready to waste your time. Okay, could you go back to the previous uh, map that you had shown? Um, these areas here where those blue areas were, is all, is all of that area going to be zoned as low density residential single family? And do you have any other questions? Pardon me? And any other questions? I know he's going to answer them as soon as you're done. They're going to answer that later. Okay, all right, that's a question. I have other questions, but those will probably be more with the other things that go on. So I'll go ahead and I'll sit down. Okay. Is there anyone else from the audience who'd like to come up and give their input or ask questions? But I'm going to close public comment for the audience. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, would you like to answer those questions now, or would you like your letters are read to the record? I can answer those now, Mayor. Uh, this is a conceptual plan. It is not a subdivision construction plan. As I stated in our uh, in our staff report, wetland has to be field verified. Once it is field verified, it will not have a zoning of, of uh, single-family residential. It will have a zoning classification of wetland protection area. 
blue on here just it represents a combination of where uh, stormwater retention may be, uh, some natural water intrusion from the lake, and, uh, and the green is obviously the conservation area. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, Council, would you like the letters uh, that were submitted right into the record? I have them. Okay. Could we please have those right into the record, please? Yes, go ahead. You've got the letters there. Okay. Do you want uh, Rick's, Rick Gonzalez's letter read, or is his testimony enough? Rick, do you, Rick, do you want your letter read, or are you good? It's up to you. Right. Okay, go, go ahead and read. I'll start with a letter from uh, Tim Sullivan, President of Lake 100. Dear Council Members from the City of Tavares, on behalf of Lake 100, we would like to respectfully offer our thoughts on the Green Reserve Project. Lake 100 is a member organization committed to advancing economic development in Lake County by providing education, guidance, and leadership. Our membership represents over 75 of Lake County's CEOs, top employers, and respected industry professionals. As such, we believe this project meets our stringent criteria for support. Lake 100 is a driving force for increasing workforce attainable housing across Lake County. We wholeheartedly support quality development for families that will help provide housing for our workforce. Lake 100 is currently creating a Lake County Attainable Housing Strategic Master Plan on behalf of the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Green Reserve meets this underrepresented housing standard. Lake 100 has established a GO team to examine and analyze various economic development projects around our county. We believe too often that the voices of no are represented before you. The private sector and people who work or run businesses are often not heard from. We want to offer our full support of the annexation rezoning of Greens Reserve at Lake Harris. Lake 100 recognizes this project meets the city's LDRs, is compliant with the city's comprehensive plan, and will positively contribute to the local tax base. In addition, these 130 new homes offer much-needed housing components previously mentioned. These families will also assuredly contribute to local economic development. We are aware that as council members, you are likely to hear from residents who do not want this project to proceed, and it can be daunting as they stand before you. Hopefully, it is our sincere hope that the collective voice of the Lake 100 will encourage you to understand there is a widespread support of this project of positive impact. We appreciate your consideration. Sincerely, Tim Sullivan, President of Lake 100. This is from Ann Yeager, a uh, Chamber of Commerce member. Esteemed City Council members, responsible growth is necessary for a successful, thriving city place that people want to be a part of, spend their money in, raise their children in, work in, and open their businesses in. Quality housing options bring quality residents and workers which benefit the city exponentially. Without local employees, business cannot succeed, and without businesses, the community cannot succeed. As a Chamber of Commerce with over 300 members, we have our finger on the pulse of our community and its needs. The Tavares Chamber of Commerce knows that that all too often, only the naysayers stand up and make a fuss at the city council meeting, while the silent majority are at home or running their businesses. In order for you to hear from a part of the silent majority on the Greens Reserve project, we are standing up to say that we fully support the annexation and rezoning of Greens Reserve at Lake Harris. Located at 27521 State Road 19, this annexation and rezoning will give the city to various more than 130 new homes and as a bonus, they've incorporated over 60% of their private property into an environmental conservation area forever. This balance is truly responsible growth. They have met all the city's land development regulations and comply with the city's current and future comprehensive plan. What more can you ask for? Over 130 new homes mean new households contributing to the various tax base. It means short-term trades with building jobs and long-term prosperity New households spending money not only in our downtown, but all around our city and county. It means full local employees, it means future local employees for our business community. We know that keeping the millage rate low is a yearly battle. New homes contributing their fair share goes a long way towards reaching that goal you will achieve this year. Lower tax rate. 
Let's continue that success by approving quality projects on private property that would otherwise do nothing for the city while vacant, paying no taxes to the city, yet being located in the city. With responsible growth, there are certainly increased needs in the community. The downtown needs more local patrons, particularly, particularly during the difficult off-season. Homes create those local patrons for our local downtown businesses. Without them, we struggle and some fail. In addition, Tiberius Crossroads Shopping Center is ready with large plats for larger national chain restaurants. These larger chains will only come to town if there are enough rooftops to provide value. This is a quality project on all fronts. Protection for the environment, increased business support, and greater tax revenue for our city. We wanted you, you to hear from the silent majority, as I am sure you will hear from the loud minority at this meeting. Many of us will be running our businesses as we must in order to survive. We want you to know that we support the hard decisions you have to make on the community's behalf in the face of adversity. Decisions of this nature are complex, and we hope to have shown some of the many benefits to the city in support of the annexation and rezoning of Greens Reserve at Lake Harris. Thank you for your consideration, Ann Yeager, Chamber of uh, Commerce Member. <laughs> This letter is from, if I get this name right, Cheryl DeCrenza, VP, Florida Area Manager, Klein Feller, Chair, Lake 100, Land Use Committee. Dear Council Members from the City of Tiberias, as the Chair of Lake 100's Land Use Committee, we would like to respectfully offer our thoughts on the Greens Reserve Project slated to appear before you this month. Lake 100 is a member organization committed to advancing economic development in Lake County by providing education, guidance, and leadership. Our membership represents over 75 Lake County CEOs, top employers, and respected industry professionals. Based on a number of positive economic considerations, we believe this project meets our stringent criteria for support. The Lake 100 Youth Committee is home to our main GO Team analysts from a land use perspective. We want to offer our full support for the annexation and rezoning of Greens Reserve at Lake Harris. This project appears to meet the City of Tiberias' comprehensive plan, the City's LDRs. We are thrilled that 60% six, of the property will create and foster an environmental conservation area. We are aware that, as Council members, you are likely to hear from residents who do not want this project to proceed. And it can be daunting as they stand before you. It is our intent collective voice of the Lake 100 be heard to illustrate the widespread support of this project of positive impact. We appreciate your consideration sincerely, Cheryl DeCrenza. And last but not least, Rick Gonzalez, uh, National Land Realty. Sure. Dear council members from the city of Tiberias, as a Tiberias business owner and a member of Lake 100, I would like to respectfully offer my thoughts on the Green Reserve Project, the Lake 100 is a member organization committing to advancing economic development in Lake County by providing education, guidance, and leadership. Our membership represents over 75 of Lake County CEOs, top employers, and respected industry professionals. Our main Lake 100 body is also contacting you regarding the Greens Reserve Project as it meets our stringent criteria for support. I, I also wanted to offer my perspective as a various business voice. As you may be aware, Lake 100 is a driving force for increasing workforce attainable housing across Lake County. We wholeheartedly support quality development for families that will help provide housing for our workforce. Greens Reserve and Lake Harris meets this underrepresented housing standard. As such, I want to offer my support of the annexation rezoning of Greens Reserve and Lake Harris. I recognize this project meets the city's LDRs, is compliant with the city's comprehensive plan, and will possibly contribute to the local tax base. In addition, these 130 new homes offer much-needed housing components previously mentioned. These families will assuredly contribute to our local development, local economic development, of which our businesses will benefit from. I'm aware that, as council members, you are likely to hear from residents who do not want this project to proceed, and it can be daunting as they stand before you. Too often, business owners and voices do not weigh in on projects of economic importance. It's my sincere hope that the collective voice of Lake 100 and my individual support will encourage you to understand there's a widespread support for this project of positive impact. I appreciate your consideration. I sincerely, Rick Gonzalez. And I 
also received a similar letter stating similar points from uh, Mr. J. Scott Perry as well. Thank you, Mr. Rooster. I'd like to catch your breath. Uh, <clears throat> Council, do you have any questions or discussion? All right, I guess, and I guess uh, the question I have, this is not going to be a 55 or older community, correct, Mr. Hyatt? That is correct. Thank you. Mr. Singer, do you have any questions? Just the, uh, like we pointed out, the dark green, no houses can be built on that area. That's going to be a dedicated conservation area. That is correct. And the cyan color up there that you see is the stormwater ponds, and the dark blue is Lake Harris. So with this project, it's 119 acres, 66 acres will be dedicated to uh, conservation. That is correct. So I, I, I agree with a lot of uh, things that have been brought up today. I think it's a positive project for the city of Tiberias. So I, I think it's uh, something worthwhile that I uh, look forward to having uh, more residents be able to come in and enjoy, enjoy the city uh, as much as uh, all the other residents that we have. Was this a 55 or older? I felt like we talked about that. I don't know that that was this project. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll confuse it with another one. But yes. I, I mean, I just remember us talking. Uh, uh, our LDR that we're working on, are we still going to have 60 foot lots? Because I remember that was a problem that we've had all along, where 60 foot wide lots and through the years, we had talked about it. We're going to address that in our LDR. I think there were 55 or 50 foot lots, and I think the new comp, or the, you're going to be approving a comp plan, and when the comp plan is approved, you'll be developing LDRs that support it. And at that point, it, it sounds like the council would like wider lots. Does that make sense? Is that yes. There, there will be options for smaller lots and wider lots. My recollection is that uh, the concern was 50 foot wide lots. We will not have an LDR that allows 50 foot wide lots. We do have 60 foot wide lots as a minimum. Okay, and my next thing is, nothing's really changed from the day I met y'all about the traffic and we had someone in the audience speak about that as if we don't care, but you know, I'm always on this traffic out there, so. You know, the same thing when we were approving other things out there, y'all were approving because I voted against, but I'm just real concerned about the traffic on Dead River Road because even when they do what's proposed to fix it, it will maybe accommodate what's already there because we've already got an issue. And I know of two other developments that are going in that have already been approved on Dead River Road. So I'm just trying to understand how this traffic, how are we going to accommodate the traffic? And, and I know people have these traffic studies and we've had them come in and tell us, but they've never sat there and sat through three lights and all the accidents. So I'm just wondering, has any more talk been on that? Have you heard anything else? I know that the county has said that they have budgeted, they have budgeted for the, these turn lanes, but just because they budgeted for it doesn't mean it's going to happen. We take things out of the budget all the time. But even if they do it, they start on it tomorrow, I don't believe it's going to accommodate. It'll just accommodate what's there right now. We've already got two, how many homes are going in out there on those two subdivisions? A bunch. Yeah. I'm just concerned about the traffic. I, mean, I love the idea. I told you that day, I love the idea of this. We desperately need it. I mean, we desperately need this type of housing because we, we just don't have enough of it. I'm just really, really concerned about the traffic. Yeah, well, obviously DOT uh, is, is reviewing traffic studies as well, you know, from the traffic engineer, so that's all I can, I'm not the professional in traffic, so I can just tell you what the traffic report says from the traffic engineer and that DOT is, is reviewed and approved, so to speak. So. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'll add is, um, and I heard the, an anecdotal comment that the traffic um, isn't being looked at by the city. And that's just so far from the truth because um, a comprehensive
traffic analysis is done by a professional Florida traffic engineer. Uh, that is reviewed by staff in thoroughness. And there's a lot of information, a lot of data on that area in that traffic report. It is then uh, presented to the uh, Planning and Zoning Board and they go through it and then it is presented to you. So uh, traffic is looked at very, very closely. Uh, we do know that State Road 19, um, which is uh, four-laned in some sections and two-laned in others, uh, has a, is programmed in the future uh, to be um, four-laned the entire route. We've had a lot of meetings on that, um, and they have it programmed a couple of years out. Uh, this particular property, of course, is, is um, south of um, Dead River Road, which is a, the problem intersection. Uh, this one is uh, close to the uh, bridge um, going to Howie. But if you go north, the bridge, you're, you're, the one you're talking about um, on Dead River Road, is, uh, there is a problem with that particular intersection. Uh, and the county has, um, is designing it, engineering it, spending a lot of money on that. And I don't see them usually shelving a project when they've spent that much money on the design and engineering. I suspect that intersection will be done within, is James here, a year? Correct, by 2021. All right, so by 2021, that whole intersection north of this project will be completely redone. That'll, that'll help a lot. When the state uh, four lanes the rest of the road that isn't four lane, that will help a lot. And then they just built a brand new bridge across, and they have plans for another bridge when they four lane. Um, so traffic study, uh, are being done. We're looking at it very closely. A lot of people are looking at it. Staff is looking at it. P and Z is looking at it. You're looking at it. Um, there's a lot of plans to improve the traffic there over the next 10 years. I think things are going to get better. They're not perfect now, but they are going to get better. Can I yeah, just yeah. say one quick thing about what James had just said? 2021. It is slated, <coughs> budgeted for 2021. So they're planning on the plans for under design now. They will be submitted to the county probably in the middle of September and then hopefully January or February they'll have a contractor selected which then the work will be done probably by the end of 2021. Just wanted you to, to, wanted to clarify that it's not going to be January of 2021. Yeah and I'm concerned too about when you build the homes are you going to be able to sell them if people were coming in and there's just such these traffic issues you know, right. and this coming is, into Tiberias because it's bad, it's just really bad, and, and uh, it's just hard doing anything out, you know, from Main Street on down because all the way to the bridge, it's just, it's not working real well. All right, thank you, that's all I have. All right, Mr. Stevenson, have you come up with any questions? No, I feel comfortable, I'll listen to everyone. And just to be clear, this development will be right next door to, to the soccer complex, which is by the point. That's correct. Okay, across the street from Ronald Harper. That's correct. Okay. And we still haven't, so we're going to have that property in between that's not annexed, right? So, because we're, we're City of Tiberias, and then you've got Hickory Point that's not City of Tiberias, and then we're going to have City of Tiberias. I believe it goes to Hickory Point off the lake, then the soccer complex, and then it begins the City of Tiberias from that point forward, because that's all towards the Lake Water Authority. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, I have another question, and I don't mind maybe able to address this. Would this development be the largest development that has the largest percentage of wetlands area in it? <clears throat> Up to your knowledge. To my knowledge, yes. This has a, a So this is one, one of the first that we'll have out there with more wetlands than actual rooftops, correct? Yes. No, but I, I do want to ask Ms. Holt. Um, I am a member of the Lake 100. I do not serve in any of the committees that generated those letters, but I am a member of the Lake 100. Thank you for disclosing that. Um, that does not prevent you from voting today. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Do I have a motion?
in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to tab 5, Ordinance 2020 08. The Palmer property, annexation and rezoning of 1.72 acres located in the northwest corner of Slow David Avenue and State Road 19. Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as stated, the subject property is 1.72 acres located at Slum Haywood Avenue and State Road 19. The land is vacant and presently zoned as County Agricultural District. The applicant is proposing that the property be annexed and rezoned to City Highway Commercial C2. The proposed zoning of Highway Commercial is appropriate for a property that abuts a state highway and it is compatible with surrounding uh, property zoning. The property is adjacent to parcels already annexed into the city and designated as Highway Commercial. Uh, the new public shopping center is directly adjacent west of this property. The applicant at this time envisions uh, commercial uses that would be compatible with the commercial development taking place on State Road 19. The annexation of this property has been reviewed per the city's annexation policy and no negative fiscal impact is uh, Environmental assessment submitted by the applicant indicates no adverse condition, conditions on the property. The preliminary traffic analysis submitted does not indicate uh, an adverse impact to level of service uh, when this project, if, if this project moves forward, uh, staff will be asking for a more detailed traffic analysis to obtain some plan approval. Uh, the city is concurrently processing future land use map amendments uh, for for the property to change from Lake County urban medium to, to various commercial. At their July 16th meeting, the Planning and Zoning Board voted unanimously to recommend approval of Ordinance 2020-08, and staff is recommending the City Council moves to approve Ordinance 2020-08. Speaking of Mr. Fitzgerald, uh, I've not received any requests from the public. Uh, would anyone like to address this topic before I close public input? Please come forward. Please see your name and address in three minutes. Hello again. Uh, my name is Pete Hudson. I'm a Peace Certified, certified Planner with Abbott Group. Uh, also with me is uh, Avon Asani, who is the uh, professional engineer uh, working with, uh, for Traffic Mobility Consultants, who's a traffic engineer that we're, we're working with on this project. He's here if you have any questions for him. Uh, I'd like to note that this is the uh, exhibition of the final corner of this intersection. Uh, we have C2 zoning, the body goes to the west, to the north. As you know, it is a public shopping center with numerous house parcels. It's also a big commercial parcel to the west. It was annexed uh, not that long ago. Uh, and to the east, you have 7 Eleven under construction, the Circle K, uh, and McDonald's on the east side. You're compatible. The remaining quarter, uh, the southwest quarter of the intersection, is a detention pond for residential subdivision. Uh, so we'll have no negative impact on it. Thank you. Is anyone else who would like to speak? Don't you go ahead and close public input. Uh, Council, do you have any questions or comments? I have a comment. I know that there was mentioned there Taco Bell and Popeyes, but I'd like to express my preference for Taco John's, but uh, I'd like to break the back to the Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or discussion? Do I have a motion?
staff recommends that City Council moves to approve Ordinance 2020 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've received any requests from the public. Would anyone like to address this topic? Well, I'll close public input. Council, do you have any questions or discussions? Do I have a motion? I have a motion that we approve Ordinance 2020 Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to tab 7, Ordinance 2020-07, Green Property, uh, future land use of 119.57 acres located at 27521 State Road 19. Mr. Fitzgerald again. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, ordinance 2020-07 is the companion ordinance to what was reviewed for the Green Property Annexation. It proposes a large-scale amendment to the future land use map, changing the property from county rural transition to city low density and wetland and conservation. The city low density residential designation of 5.6 units per acre is compatible with surrounding property, and all wetlands determined to be greater than one acre in size shall be designated as wetland and conservation. And surrounding the property uh, are residential in nature. The city of Tiberias has municipal water and sewer service available to the uh, property. No adverse impact to level of service. Uh, the amendment request is consistent with our comprehensive plan and a low density residential and wetland conservation future land use would be the most appropriate land use for the property. Uh, this proposal uh, was presented to the planning and zoning board at their July 16th meeting. They voted unanimously to recommend approval and staff recommends that the city council moves to approve. What we are approving is the transmittal of ordinance 2020-07 the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity and other state agencies for review. Ordinance 2020-07 will come back to City Council for an adoption hearing. So this is to approve the transmittal of the ordinance to the state for review. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. I have not received any requests from the audience. If anyone would like to address this topic. I'm going to close public input. Council, do you have any questions or discussion? Do I have a motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 to 0. Which brings us to tab 8, consideration of collective bargaining agreement between the city and the professional firefighters union, local 3245, Chief Key. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, Council. For the audio record, this is Richard Key, your fire chief, and uh, this is a change of gears. We're not talking about land now, so uh, we're talking about firefighters. This is the presentation of our collective bargaining agreement between the uh, Tiberias Firefighters Union and the city of Tiberias. So to, uh, to start this, we really need to start back a year ago, back in our collective bargaining agreement we had last year. Um, for a number of reasons, we were kind of late in the process getting started. We identified, once we did get started, we had some uh, compression issues in our salary ranges, and uh, we wanted to get those fixed. Both sides wanted to fix those, but it was late in the fiscal year preparation for that budget, for the budget we're under now. And of course, uh, Finance Director Houghton and Mr. Drew, they need some lead time to work those things in. So what we did is we just put a placeholder in last year's collective bargaining agreement saying that we would address it this year with this year's collective bargaining process. Sounds well and good. We were slated to start in February. We knew we were going to start real early, give ourselves plenty of time to do that. And along comes the COVID pandemic. So that just throws a monkey wrench at everything, including collective bargaining or agreements. So we did get started. We went ahead and started early. We've been meeting by Zoom meetings. We've been meeting social distancing. Uh, Councilmember Stevenson got to be part of the uh, management team this year. So. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. It was a pleasure having you as part of that process. And I think maybe you learned something about firefighters, that uh, they're not as bad as, uh, no, never mind, they're, they're okay. So thank you for being there a part of that. So we have a, a, a final agreement that we're presenting to you tonight for, for your consideration. Um, you'll, we, we've had copies to you. You should have two copies in your agenda packet. One has all the strike throughs and underlines. Of changes, um, deletions of old language, additions of new language, and then there's another copy, a second copy that's marked draft, but that is a signature ready copy of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, 
some of the salient points that uh, come forward uh, in this year's collective bargaining process are that the members of the firefighters union um, have agreed to receive the same 2% COLA that has been proposed for all city employees. The members of the firefighters union agreed to the same changes for health benefits proposed for all city employees. And then we were able to address those compression issues um, to the satisfaction of both parties, and we made a notation of that in this year's collective bargaining agreement. So we can say safely that it's done. We have uh, we have uh, we have taken care of those compression issues to everyone's satisfaction. So we have a couple of options for you. Option number one is for the Tulare City Council to move to accept the changes to the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Tulare's professional firefighters, Local 3245, as presented in your agenda packet, authorizing the City Administrator to sign the agreement on behalf of the City. And the second option is for you to take no action and just give staff an alternative direction. And of course, our, our recommendation from staff is option one. And this has been um, reviewed by Mr. Williams. So, Mayor, back to you. Uh, Council, thank you very much for your consideration. Uh, this is Hope, Mr. Drury, and I are here for any questions. I just want to add one thing. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Roy Stevenson for attending every meeting and assisting us with uh, the whole process. It was great to have you <coughs> part of the management team. Uh, Lori Houghton for uh, being there and assisting in the process. Chrissy Woodlitz over here for being at all the meetings and assisting with the process, and of course our fire chief uh, for being at those meetings as well. Uh, just thank you all for being part of the management team to work through uh, these issues. All right, back to you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Jeremy. I did not receive any request from the audience to speak, but is there anyone who would like to speak on this topic before I close public input? Seeing none, I'll close public input. Council, do you have any questions? Yes, I am Mr. Don't shoot me, but I just want to ask this. So this is part of, so if we agree to this and the city administrator signs because of the 2% that is, we've got the COLA increase that we have in the budget as of right now, the budget hasn't been approved. So what happened if somehow it came out of the budget? Say, say we decide we can't afford to give our employees at 2% cost of living raise because of the bad things that have happened. What happens with this if we've approved it tonight? I think the answer to that uh, question is the intent of the two parties was that they will receive the same um, increase as the other employees. And I will not be signing this uh, on behalf of this council until the budget is done. Once the budget is done, if the budget does not get completed, or it's a different number, uh, then we'll be going back to the bargaining and telling them that it's a new number, but they've already agreed to go with this, the same as all the other employees. All right, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we go with the staff's recommendation of option one, please. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Which brings us to tab nine, uh, park location and proposed pickleball court <coughs> community services. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Council previously authorized the staff to build a pickleball court out at Ridge Park um, alongside the future site of the senior center. And earlier this year, the DLR group presented a master plan to everyone that showed that pickleball court right alongside Alfred Street right next to where the senior center was going to go and the shuffleboard courts. Looking further into that, we're finding that the pickleball really won't fit right there. It's, the court is just not conducive to that area. It would take up the space right next to Alfred Street. So we're looking at either we could look at the master site plan again, revisit that, look at the layout, make the adjustments, or our recommendation is to actually move the pickleball over to where the tennis ball, the tennis court area is at Aesop's Park. It would open up Ridge Park, that green space. It would be more conducive to the senior center with that extra land. And the sports of tennis and pickleball are very cohesive. So you can actually convert temporarily your tennis court 
forks into pickleball courts with portable nets and line chalk or line uh, tape and use those as both pickleball and tennis courts. So before you tonight, we're asking you to consider that recommendation of just moving that pickleball over to ASOPS and here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. I did not receive any requests from the audience, but anyone like to speak on this topic? I think the only thing I'll add is you all have already approved the pickleball courts, you've approved the budget, you've approved the funding for it, you've approved the, uh, um, the loan for it. This is really just making sure you're okay if it's moved to a different location. Okay. okay. Well, seeing no uh, indication from the audience that anyone would like to speak, I'll close public input. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, I know when we first looked at this, and it was going to come back before Council prior to the whole building of the uh, whole facility. You know, I always had a little bit of a problem with the, the, the single pickleball court. Um, I know, you know, it's a very popular sport. Uh, my son currently plays tennis. He's an avid tennis player. So I'm very familiar with, uh, you know, the, the, the combination of pickleball and tennis. Uh, but it seems to me like a majority of the pickleball courts, they always consist of either three or four courts. Uh, I don't know if it's having one pickleball court is really worth going after. Uh, I would rather see us, I do like the idea of you know, possibly moving it over to ASOP, but I would rather see us uh, you know, use that money than else rather than, I think, do we know how much is uh, budget for the pickleball court? It's $30,000. 30000 I mean, I would much rather see us kind of put this on hold, the pickleball court at least, um, do a little bit more research and see if, you know, at a later time, we can maybe put it in three courts or four courts. I just, um, I just think if we're going to do it, I think we need to do it right. And I just think putting one pickleball court in would just not be the right way to go. Any other comments or questions from council? The tennis courts that are there, we could actually make those part of the pickleball, correct? I see, I see vice mayor staring at me that she doesn't want her tennis courts. <laughs> No, I was just, okay. I'm going to be honest, I'm the liaison to this project, and I've never heard, you know, when I saw this agenda, it's the first I've heard of it, about pickleball courts not being in there, so I'm not sure what happened there, but I didn't know nothing about this, so other than, you know, until I saw the agenda, so I'm not really sure uh, what's going on here, and I'll let look at it, you, because it's just courts. <laughs> I'm just thinking the money was hard, you know, on a loan. So what does that mean that if, you know, we're not, I mean, we're not restricted as to what we could do, correct? Well, you'd be restricted to uh, what the loan was for, um, you know, which is the five, six projects you approved. Yeah. Uh, and, and you could, I think we could uh, ask the, the loan um, issuer um, if you wanted to do some other type of project for the 30000 it would be easy to do the you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, 8 projects, 6 projects you approved as part of it. Yeah, and, and you know, the only, I, I think I agree with um, Councilmember Singer that having more than one pickleball court is important. Um, I do know that, the, as he said, the tennis courts could be converted temporarily um, uh, for pickleball uh, courts. And I don't know how you all feel about that. I'd rather, you'd rather keep it at the tennis courts. Or, yeah. so, I mean, what we can do, I was not aware, Council Member, or Orchestra, that Tamara had not coordinated this with you. So, what we could do is maybe table this item, look at it a little more closely. Uh, work with the liaison of this particular project and um, come back with some options for you uh, because I was not aware that you weren't part of that. Any other uh, discussion from council or would anyone like to make a motion to table? I'll make a motion to table. Second. We'll make a motion to table this topic until there's more information. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries by the zero. Uh, which brings us to the budget workshop. Ms. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Can you hear me on this? Um, I can. Can anyone in the back? It's a little 
low if you could get close to it. Okay. It didn't sound at first like it was working that well. That's much better. Just stay close to it. Okay. All right. Um, this is one of, the, one of the final workshops to finalize your proposed budget for the general fund, utilities fund, special funds, and capital improvement funds for the upcoming fiscal year 2021, which of course runs through October through September of next year. Um, previously, July 1st, um, we presented, staff presented the general fund budget on July 15th. Staff presented the utility and special revenue funds uh, to the council. And also there was some um, discussion on the general fund budget. On July 29th, um, this council established a lower millage rate for the upcoming FY21 fiscal year of 6.90 and also loaded the voted debt service millage rate to 0.2623. And then on August 5th, uh, staff presented the capital improvement program to council. Uh, the final, as it stands today, the final state share of revenues have been received, uh, estimates have been received from the state and incorporated into the, to the proposed budget, which resulted in the general fund budget being adjusted, as indicated on your agenda summary sheet. The stormwater budget was also adjusted to reflect a change of um, overseeing of the right-of-way department. It was moved from the general fund over to stormwater fund where there's more um, synergy. And in doing so, there had to be some adjustments um, in the budget uh, through the transfers to accomplish uh, that move. It is recommended that council have discussions tonight on those items that they would like that they asked us to bring back for more discussion as well as any other items in the budgets and then finalize the budgets for the public hearings. I think the trim notice most people should receive this week, I know I received mine from the uh, Lake County um, property appraiser which stated the 6.90 millage rate and the 0.2623 voted debt service millage rate. After you finalize the budget, then this will come back to you for the public hearing and we will um, advertise in the second meeting of September. Um, the general fund budget is changed from a total budget of $18,944,810 to $18,799,263. That's a reduction of $145,547. Equal changes in revenue and expense. And I think we gave you a couple of exhibits tonight that we laid at the put at the dais for you. Um, there is exhibit A that reconciles the budget that shows the changes that have been made to the budget due to the decrease in revenues and the change from the, uh, the right of way department from the general fund over to the stormwater fund. Um, and then we also exhibit B provides a list of some of the items that council requested us to bring back. One is, uh, number one on the list is designating the current year canceled 4th of July fireworks budget of 49700 for either roads, a COVID release celebration in the entertainment district, or put it in reserves to carry forward. Um, number two, discuss increasing the budget for roads. The city budgeted 225000 in road paving in the prior fiscal year. FY 2020. The proposed budget for roads, FY 2021, is 130000 And the FY 2021 budget reflects a decrease of $95,000. Number three on council's list was to discuss the Florida Retirement System benefits budgeted in the city for the city council in the FY 2021 budget. FRS is budgeted for city council members at a total cost of $4,413 and that is scheduled for implementation if council was forward for July of 2021. And then number four on the list was um, council asked for, for discussions on passing credit card fees to customers. And this, we did some research, I went through, looked at the most recent completed and looked at what we've spent to the credit card processors for all of the different uh, merchant accounts that we have. But the two that council was interested in was the general fund and the um, pavilion. And those together total about $10,000 in fees. 
Um, and those are the items and the uh, backup that I've given you tonight at Vegas. And I'm available for any questions. We have but, uh, Brett in the audience as well. So we're, we're here to help you make your decisions. Or assist you. Thank you, Ms. Hoden. I didn't think it any requests to speak to the audience. Would anyone like to speak on the topic before we move forward and close up public input? Seeing no input from the audience, and we close public input. Council, do you have any questions for discussion of the discussion? Or we could just go to find this Hogan's list and we can go right down here list and then check for the next one. Item one, designating the current council uh, for the July budget, uh, $49,700. Uh, discussion of whether we should use it for roads, uh, a reopening of Tiberius Entertainment District, or reserves. Uh, Ms. Vegas, what is your well, um, I'm going to have to go with reserves. We're, we're, we're in tough times right now. We, we don't know when, when this situation with COVID is, is going to be put to bed and what that's going to affect. So my gut feeling is we go to reserves. It's there. You know, if the money comes in, there's money available, then we can play with that. But I, I, my vote would be reserves. Mr. Singer? Yeah, I know we uh, unfortunately had to cancel our firework celebration. There was a number of other events uh, that we had to cancel as well with our October Fest and Food Fest. I know some of those funds were from the tips so of the general fund. Uh, I know that we had also discussed, you know, once this whole um, COVID is behind us, we want to have a large celebration. So, I mean, I think it would be nice to be able to, to have that, but it seems to me like we don't need all that $49,000 from the 4th of July celebration. It seems like we can, all the money and all the events that we've canceled, we've saved a lot of money from those. I think we can, you know, do something as far as some type of celebration, but, um, you know, with those other funds that we've had to, uh, or the other events, I think we could use those funds. I would still like to see us try to get our um, road repaving up this year. However, we can do that. I'm a little disappointed that that had to uh, be reduced this year. That's something that I think is very important. I think uh, all of us that really appreciate when their roads are able to get resurfaced. I also agree with uh, what Ms. Weege said. I mean, we are in some tough times. We definitely need to add to our reserves. But I'd like to, for us to, to look at the other events that were canceled, be able to use those funds uh, for something as well, and also try to add to our uh, road resurfacing. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Mr. Stevenson? Mr. Drew, if we put this into reserves, can we pull some back out later on? Let's say, God willing, COVID ends. Yes. I'm all about the Ms. Fister? Okay, well, I've been doing my homework, so I'm going to have to ask hard questions here. Um, I've been out, you know, talking with the public, and you hear me talk about that $400,000 to get to the rollback rate. Did our employees lose any funds during COVID? You mean pay? Yes. No. Is it fair? So with our tax rate, when it's not going to the rollback rate, people are going to be paying more taxes. I mean, it's correct. Even though we're going back to 6.90 or what? It depends on what your value of your property is. If the value of your property went down, they're paying less. If it stayed the same. If the values go up. It depends on your property, your specific property. So if your property remained the same, your tax rate goes down. If your property value went up, your property value goes up. According to the tax, uh, according to our tax assessor, I mean, our property, it is, did, did the values go up in the city of areas? Well, the, some properties did, yes. But the total is new construction. I mean, when we get our revenues, it's, it's expansion of individual properties, it's uh, new houses that uh, uh, came online, and it's property values that went up. And, and I think it's fair to say that the property values went up um, in the community um, as, a, uh, uh, as a, like a majority of them. Uh, but I, I'd have to go through 6,000 parcels to figure out who's went down and who's went up. And, and the employees, y'all know, I, I support y'all, I respect y'all, I vote every single year for raises, except during 2011 when we were going through those tough times when, when we just couldn't. I'm wondering, is this one of those times? You know, I, I just had people in the public ask me this, and I, 
I'm wondering if this is one of these times because the people, even with us going back a little bit that we've gone back, the people who this hurts the most are going to be the taxpayers. And most of these taxpayers have lost money. Most of these taxpayers, because of COVID, have lost a lot of money. And they're all struggling. So now they're going to not only do they have less money, and their property values have gone up, most of them, but now they're also paying for a raise. When our employees, y'all don't look at me like this, our employees didn't lose anything through COVID. They didn't, but yet the majority of the people in our city did. The majority of the businesses, the majority of the working people did lose. The only thing I would So I'm just, I'm trying to find that $400,000 because I want to go to the rollback rate for the first time since I've been on the council. That's what I'd like to see. I will say this, um, while m most people were social distancing, isolating in their homes and doing all of that, our first responders were out on the front line protecting our residents. You know, they were out there doing what they needed to do, putting themselves at risk. All of your um, employees were out there taking care of our people in this city. Um, what, it, it, and I, I, I think that the uh, two percent is very de minimis. Uh, when I look at the raises that all the other cities are proposing this year and county and all that, we're lower than that. And so if you were having a lower raise than a lot of your other cities and county, um, these folks worked really, really hard for five months while we went through COVID, protecting our public and doing everything. Uh, and I'm, this board said collectively that they wanted to take care of their employees. You all voted on that, and yet that was the instruction. And so we put in there a small thank you to all these hardworking employees. The other thing I will say is we have less employees per capita than any other city around here. We have a lean, mean fight machine. That means it's all hands on deck. Everybody was out there uh, helping each other get, get the job done because we don't have uh, a large government here. If you look at all the uh, data, uh, when you compare our cities to other cities in Florida, we have um, a small number of employees uh, per capita uh, with other cities the same size. So um, I think the two percent is justified when you compare with what's going on around here. Okay, these are just all questions. There's questions I've been asked. And what is that two percent raise across the board as far as the total of what it's increased our budget? Uh, it, for the general fund, it's approximately, and I don't have the exact number here, but it's approximately eighty thousand. Eighty thousand, and then on the other side is. And these events that we've had, can the money, can that decrease? Can we, can we get, can we go back further on this rate? I mean, it, it doesn't sound like. Is there anything that we could do that you know off the top of your head that we could get to this four hundred thousand dollars without allowing the employees to have their two percent? What in the world can we do to get to this four hundred thousand dollars? That's what I'm asking. I mean, I've, I've been I think you have to book. start closing libraries down and closing, you know, lower the service level. One of the things this board said was a similar level of service for our community and lower the millage rate. So think about this. In order to provide a similar level of service, the cost goes up. The cost goes up because electric goes up, fuel goes up, healthcare goes up. All the costs associated with uh, contracting out all of our services uh, that we have goes up. So the cost is going up, but we're going to lower the revenues. Um, it's a challenge to create that balance. So this particular year, there aren't a lot of projects. We lowered the roads. Uh, we've, there are no real significant, uh, you know, uh, projects that are being funded out of the general fund. Um, it's a tight year. I mean, it's a lean year. Uh, but the, 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 the direction of this board um, was lower the millage rate. We did that. The direction of this board was um, a similar level of service. We did that. 
I think we would have to go in and lower a level of service somewhere. Well, these are just hard questions, but they need to be asked because the public really don't understand this. They well, I, I think this is a budget workshop and these questions are appropriate. I mean, that's what budget workshops are about. Talk about all options. It's a tough budget year for everybody across America, including governments. And uh, this is what the budget workshop should be for, is to dive into it deeper and deeper and deeper. So departments, you don't think a department, all the departments couldn't find 2% or 5%, they couldn't find anything you think in their budgets? Well, they did. I mean, in order to do what needed to be done, uh, they all had to cut, cut, cut. I have provided, what, how many millions of dollars worth of cuts this year? Uh, quite a few. And I gave it to you in two forms. Existing things that we already have that I'm cutting and uh, things that we need in the future uh, that we need for next year that I've cut. So there are millions of dollars of cuts for things that were needed to keep this city uh, on a forward path uh, and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cuts uh, for things we currently have. So the department heads and the management team cut, 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 cut to meet the board's collective um, priorities, which were similar level of service, lower the millage rate. And these events, what would that add up to? Could we go back in if we're not doing these events and we just say we're going to event free this year? Just no Christmas. I mean, I think that's Christmas is in the seventy-five thousand dollar range. Yeah, we got fifty from the other. Yeah. And then what else? other little events that we're not able to do? I mean, does that a lot add of the that could maybe be twenty-five percent of the four hundred thousand dollars that we're trying to find out? I mean, one, one of the things you have to be considered, I know the chamber is not fully here now, but they are dependent upon these events. I mean, the downtown business community needs those events in order to stay in business. I mean, they've got waiters and waitresses and, and cooks and, and uh, dishwashers and, and, and people that need, if you just, you know, you've got an entertainment district and then you're going to have no events and, um, you know, to get another point something out of the mill, which is going to do, you know, five dollars for the average resident. I understand every five dollars is important, uh, but you're not going to get enough money. You're going to you're going to close down the events in the downtown. It's going to affect all the business community get on there, and then the home, uh, the business community, and the homeowner is going to see a few dollars. Uh, I, I just think the unintended consequences are going to be um, larger than we're at. We looked at this budget. You've looked at this budget. All of you, 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 you we've been. And it is down to, you know, this year is a very bare, basic budget um, in order to meet the goals of this board, which is to lower the millage rate uh, and maintain our library and our, um, you know, our, our level of services. And you feel confident that we'll be able to be full swing ahead come Christmas? My personal opinion is this COVID thing is going away. And, uh, November. It looks like it's it's going away. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I think in January we'll be back. And uh, I've cut many things. I put them to be looked. You guys can look at them again in uh, April. Um, there are projects that are needed, including road paving and, and those things. So those projects are all on hold. Um, we'll be you know back in April to see if there's anything else we can do. But. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a very lean budget um, for our city, and we have a very lean budget when you compare us to anybody else. And thank you. Like I said, when you're out there and you're talking with people, I can't answer a lot of these questions. So I felt like this was the best place to to present all the questions I've been asked. And uh, thank you. You're welcome. And just something I know that you had picked up a sheet of paper because I know that you wanted to say how many million dollars for cut or how much money is cut from the budget already? From the general fund budget alone, we cut $939,177 for personal service costs. A lot of that was positions that we had in last year's budget that we didn't fill um, that were already budget that we have on hold that we cut. And we'll look at, we'll add, bring some of those back and ask in April if revenues come back. We cut a million two hundred forty thousand nine hundred forty-four dollars from operating expenditures. That's your contracts, your supplies, the things that are needed to get the service level, the 
capital projects that were on our CIP plan that we had pushed out in out years, $6,921,859, a total of $11,928,798 that were cut just from the general fund budget. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, <clears throat> and just to express my preference on number one, I would prefer to put it in reserves um, so that as things arise, we can have some money in there to address them. Um, as far as uh, number two, discussing the budget for roads, I know it has been decreased, and I know that we just got a savings from our initial budget of $125,000. Um, is that calculated in the millage? Uh, is that reduced our millage by savings from the proposed budget to the actual budget? Or? Well, revenue went down to $145,000. So there's, it was an equalization. Expenses went down, revenues went down. Yes. So there's no money to be gained to the budget groups. No. So does anyone have any further discussion on the road paving projects for this year? Does everyone say what they need to say? I think I've already said. I mean, just anything that we can find. I would like uh, to try to increase our road resurfacing. Um, but you know, but again, I'm also in favor of uh, adding to our reserves as well. Like I said, I just. Uh, you know, it was just a hard hit going from the 225 down to the 130, so anything we could find for that, I would prefer to see it go in there first. And then we will be back to you in April when the economy turns around, and one of the first things on your list is ropes. And what is our, um, what is in our um, reserves right now? I mean, where are we at as far as our numbers? About a million, or? And I know this when we were trying to reach a certain marker. Because the suggested amount, whatever our suggested amount is, but I'd like to know too, is where we are actually. Uh, we can get, I, I like to deal with real accurate numbers, so we will bring that back to you. Okay. So we'll make sure we have exact numbers that okay. are accurate. Do you have it? We estimate to end the fiscal year based on the budget we have and what we ended up with last year, one point. Two million fifty-two thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars, and that gives us six point six percent. And what percentage are we aiming for? Well, the goal is between five and uh, twenty percent is GFOA. So we're on the low end of it. You don't want to go below five. You want to be above five, and we're at would you say six? Six point six. We, six. We'd like to get to a point where we have three months of operating expenditures. So that point and to do it all at once would be costly to the taxpayers. So doing it gradually over time is palatable. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other event money that we didn't use that could also go into reserves to build that up? Do we have any that we because we've had other events canceled? Yeah, um, a lot of the private events don't really we do in kind services, you know, we'll do portal lets, um, We'll do um, overtime with the police department and others, you know, to, to handle. There's not a lot of cash that goes into those private events. Our events are, as you know, the Christmas event, the 4th of July, um, Boo Fest. There's a fourth. What am I missing? For October Fest. So those are the four we do. Um, and, um, Which brings us to item number three, discussing the Florida Retirement System Benefits Budget for City Council. Does anyone have any questions or discussion on that topic? I just feel that as a City Council, this is not a career up here. This is a service to our residents. And I know it's only $4,000 and change, but I don't think we should be partaking in that. That's just my thought. So can that be um, optional if a customer wishes to take that? And they don't, they can yes, when that is implemented, there will be a process, and each council member will vote, and it will be an irreversible, irrevocable irreve irreve vote for yourself. But any, should you leave office, if a new council member comes in, they will automatically be required to be part of the, the FRS. They'll be required to do that. They, yes. Yeah, is that yeah, it's. It's a vote per person once you implement it, and that one person cannot come back and join later. But when they vacate the position, the 
then the next person is an automatic. It's just like for city employees. When we implemented FRS, each employee had the option, do I want to go into FRS or do I not? And it's a revocable decision. I'm having trouble with that word tonight. <laughs> so, I mean, if we don't do that, then that's $20,000 per year that would be spent. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not in favor of uh, you know council members uh, you know, just picking up our FRS. Uh, I think we need to um, you know have this as a career, so I would uh, be in favor of that. Um, so just to clarify, I know that we just mentioned twenty thousand, but your cheat sheet says four thousand for all council members. So is it four thousand for everybody or four thousand? He asked the possibility what it would be for the whole year. That's four thousand four hundred thirteen dollars for starting in July through the end of September next year. So it would be just one quarter. So for all four quarters for a full year would be four thousand forty four hundred times four. Okay. And I think this was only brought up. Wasn't there something that you were? What was that same thing with the insurance? Remember, I think that we were just, I thought it was. And you're considered employee, employees, and it was um, the same benefits, just like the county does. They're all, all elected constitutionals in Lake County. Your property appraiser, a lot of cities you know, that are in the FRS. Um, when you're up here, you're an employee, so you get health care, you get uh, some pay, you get some low retirement. I mean, it's a stipend on the pay, and it's a stipend on the retirement. It's probably fifty dollars, maybe, um, when you're after thirty years. I mean, I, don't, I haven't done the calculation, but uh, yeah, all your elected officials are treated like employees. So you'll see um, the benefits that the, uh, other employees get are usually given to the city. The city doesn't have the FRS. You have the pay, you have the um, health care, you have the other things. This was the only one you didn't have in, in your package. So to treat you like the rest of the employees and like the county does, this but, was the last piece. But again, wasn't that something, as we started talking about this years ago, wasn't that something that came down, a ruling that about employees, that's why we ended up with the insurance? There was something that came down. Yeah, that said, I think that was insurance. more, but on the FRS, it's elective. Okay. On the FRS, you couldn't either choose. Well, the insurance was elective, but it had to be offered. For yes, that's what it was. Had to be offered. Well, uh, I already have an FRS account, and I know that this is not going to make much of a difference by the addition. So, uh, hopefully, no one's trying to retire off of their city council <laughs> FRS program. So, I don't think it's really necessary for city council. And then, you know, kind of a pain if you don't stay on city council to monitor that after the fact for the $150 you may have in your account. And I would say that the city council would be required to contribute 3% of their pay on the employee side as well. It still would not make that much of a difference for anybody, I don't believe. So, uh, anybody else have any comments they'd like to make? I don't want to give up 2% on all that pay. The FRS wouldn't be, I'm sorry, I just that one. The FRS wouldn't mean that much to me. That's twenty thousand right there. If we all agreed that we didn't want to do that, that's going to be something near twenty grand. Maybe we could put that towards roads, Mr. Singer. You know, it'll actually be four thousand. Right, for this quarter, but and going forward, that's twenty thousand right there. In the future, yeah. yeah. So, what if we all just decided as a group, like we'll all give up our FRS here on City Council and just, if we mean that we want to fix the roads, let's mean it. Do we have that four thousand dollars already budgeted? Yeah, it's in your budget. That's, now we only need three hundred ninety-six thousand. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like we're in the agreement with that. So, which brings us to item four, discussing uh, passing away credit card fees to customers. I know that this week has brought that up. Uh, do you have any additional comments for discussion? No, thank you for researching that, um, Lori. Um, I think we should pass it on. Every other municipality, when you charge, pass on the percentage. You go to the county and they pass it on. So I don't see why not. It's $10,000. Well, it's going to be used for the roads. So, uh, Mr. Uh, 
What's that percentage? Uh, the percentage average, because every every credit card, some credit cards get a different rate based on their credit worthiness, and the average for general fund for FY19 was 2.637 percent, and approximately two dollars and ninety six cents per transaction, and the cost for the general fund was two thousand six hundred and nineteen dollars and forty three cents. The cost for the pavilion was seven thousand one hundred fifty eight dollars and twenty three cents, and the percentage is lower, one point nine nine five percent. But the cost per tra transaction is approximately uh, it will is thirty five ninety seven. That's the average thirty five dollars ninety seven cents. But the average sale at the pavilion for a rental of the whole facility is five thousand dollars. Did that answer your question? Yes, you know, I know of a company that, I think it was 3.99, and uh, that you use, and it, it it didn't matter if you, you could swipe the credit card 100 times. You could, if they owed you $10, you could just swipe it, you know, a penny at a time for the same amount. So, I mean, you might want to shop that as far as passing it around when it comes out to be the, which I know y'all will hear much better at this than I am, but yeah, there's some out there though that we, we could really save that money. Okay. You know, I'm thinking uh, the pavilion, we're trying to get the pavilion to break even if they're spending 7000 We could bring in 10000 That would help the pavilion break even, just the way I'm looking at this right now. I just kind of always like the idea of doing things different in today's uh, being unique. I mean, each person's not paying that much. We would have ten thousand to help them break even. Uh, I think that would be okay with uh, passing the credit card fee along to the consumer who's probably used to that transaction. And that would be across the board. That would be if they're signing up for all or if they're paying their building pay permits. Sure, we can pass on on the higher the higher cost transactions 100. percent I've been in conversations with our provider. Um, there is some state law on what we can pass and provide, and implement. So I'll be working on that and get that back to you. Um, but I just wanted to throw that. Out there. Mr. Sager. I like the torch roads. Only like eighty thousand dollars more to uh, bump up to uh, last year's budget. I think I've got um, the consensus of the board, uh, so we will um, adjust the budget based on the consensus that I heard today. That will um, create resolutions and budgets for the public hearings. And there will be two public hearings in September. One is on uh, Wednesday and one is on a Thursday uh, for the general public. We'll advertise it as we always do. Uh, and you'll have one final, uh, two final shots on making any more adjustments to the budget after you get the uh, public comment during the public hearing process. So I think we're good. Thank you, Mr. And uh, do we have any additional questions on the budget before uh, we let this move off of them? No, but Ms. Houghton, if you can find anything that we can roll back a little bit more, I'd certainly be happy. If anything comes up in the next two weeks, an endowment or something, I don't know. If we receive it, I will be screaming from the lowest platform. I guess I will, anything comes up, but I'm sorry, I'm certainly not going to Thank you, Ms. Hogan. Which brings me to new business. Is there any new business? Seeing we have a new business, is there any old business? Seeing we have old business. Uh, we're an audience to be heard and have received any requests from the public, but I see Mr. Jones' hand up, so we'll go ahead and get him up here. Please remember to say your name and address. And you only have three minutes. Van Chioko, 12619 Milwaukee Avenue. Uh, interesting discussion about the uh, uh, rollback rate. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, 
agree with Lori that uh, I think you should be moving to the rollback rate. I think every city in this county should, and the county should also. I do know that you have sales tax reductions. I know that their capital projects can be pushed back. In uh, the discussion about cuts, you got to remember that Mr. Drury is very smart. He comes up and he asks everybody for a list of all the things that they want, everything in the store. So you put it all together. Now, and you look at reality of what your revenues are, and that's where those so-called cuts come from. And to me, that's kind of like a figment of imagination, and it's, it's a very smart way of doing things. So it sounds like there's a lot of work in making cuts, but in my view, you should have started with the, the available revenue with that and then filled in behind it. Um, and so I don't think that you understand that a lot of people in this, and I'm going to be doing research over this next couple of months, in this county are hurting. I fortunately am not uh, pretty, uh, at least so far I can count on my uh, pension, but you never know where, what could happen to that depending on the next elections. Uh, so the, I would really suggest that you seriously consider moving to the rollback rate in your decisions in September. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Uh, Pastor Watkins, I saw you want to speak. Yes, sir. Please say your name and address, and you have presents. Okay, Michael Watkins, 805 Summer Avenue, Missouri. Uh, first, it's good to see uh, Councilman Sinker back in, in this spot there. Uh, good to see you, sir. Um, also, I want to thank the city for um, there was um, a situation on Slim Haywood Road where it's really dark there at night. And so the city did put up two bikes, so we want to thank Phil and his uh, department and whoever else was involved in getting that. I did ride down there last night, and it's still dark in, in the space in between. So I know you guys, uh, from listening, there's a lot of budgets and a lot of issues you all are trying to work out. So but that is something to consider because there's a lot of family, people who live down that road, and there's a lot of kids. So. At some point, I would hope the city can look at that at night and see there's a curve road there, and it's dangerous. Even with what's happening, it's better, but I think we do need uh, more lighting there. So hopefully somewhere we can uh, uh, try to do at least a couple more lights on that road. But thank you for what you've done. Also, there's something that, uh, to me, I know uh, Earlier on in the year, I think we had a situation at Ingraham Park. Uh, some things had happened. The park was closed. Uh, the park has been redone. It looks nice. Uh, but we thought, I guess, that that would help with our situation. So what I'm trying to say is this here. Uh, I know the chief. I talked with him. I talked with Mr. Drury. And I know there's efforts to try to make uh, the area safer. But I'm still hearing of shootings in Japan. There, to me, from a, a, a concerned citizen's mind, there's a lot of shootings going on in our city. And residents have been calling me, saying, hey, Pastor Mike, what's going on? Well, Pastor Mike don't know because I couldn't even find nothing on the news about the latest shooting. And I know the chief is doing his best, and I, I'm sure Mr. Jury is, but I would say this. We need to intensify our efforts with this. Because this is getting to be more and more serious. We used to think that that was always in Orlando or somewhere else. We're having a lot of shootings in this city. And I'm concerned about uh, citizens that could be innocent bystanders. And it seems that the people who are doing this, I don't know if they're from out of town, in town, whatever, they seem to think they can do this without uh, no problem. Or maybe I should say it like this. Why, why are they so willing to do it here in Tavares? And I know other cities in the area have had shootings, so I'm not trying to point blame on anybody, but I would say as a council, when we look at that budget, if it's where we have more officers, a bigger budget for it, or whatever the situation may be, this is starting to be serious for us. It's happening way too often in this city, so whatever we can do, to kind of
kind of uh, deal with this, I think we need to deal with it. It needs to be on the forefront that there's too many people coming to this city shooting, and I'm concerned for kids, parents, and everybody else. So I ask you all to give that some serious consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Watkins. And uh, real quick, Mr. Dream, in the budget, there's still, we're adding two police officer positions in the current budget. Correct. And is body care still part of this current budget? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I know that we'll continue to have better meetings and we'll continue to talk about Mr. Watkins. So, um, yeah, we have another meeting on the 24th or 26th, 24th of September. Uh, September 22nd. 22nd. We have another um, one, another uh, race relations meeting. And uh, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? Okay, so we'll go from right to left. Please come forward, say your name and address at the podium, and you have three minutes. Hi, I'm Belinda Rink. I live at 216 Fern Avenue. I know many of you. Um, I grew up in Tavares. We appreciate everything that you guys do. You're doing a great job. The entertainment center is great. We have a golf cart. We come down almost every day. We come down with our grandson. Like Pastor Watkins, we are terribly concerned about the shootings in Tavares. We don't hear anything about them. We don't get any communication except what you see on Facebook or just people gossiping and talking about it. So we we like to know what kind of actions are being done and things that are being done. What kind of collaborations are we doing? Are we collaborating with the churches like we used to? Are we pulling in nonprofits who who know about these kind of things going on? And I don't know that we need to do it all about race relations. It's just about our community trying to work together. And that's what we want. I don't want people down the road afraid to talk to the police. They're supposed to be our friends. That's the issue. Our people are afraid of their neighbors. And so I don't know what kind of committee y'all are doing or what we, my husband and I can help do on. We run a business, so we're busy work. Those people that never can come because of that. But again, we appreciate what you're doing, but whatever we can do to help, let us know, let the community know. Keeping it all a secret isn't helping. It's just getting the gossip. And it just, just keeps things going. It does not stop them. So, I don't know, I'll start attending the meetings and see what I can do to help. And we appreciate it as we move forward, but we're bringing a lot of other people in here. We're proving a lot of neighborhoods. And I just think if your city's not safe, you're doing a disservice to everybody. I think Lou mentions, you know, that we're here for the citizens. But all I've heard today is all about the infrastructure and the budget and what are we doing. But what are we doing for our citizens? Sorry. So, boss. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know that you really like to follow up the police are actively looking into it and can't really comment on active investigations. I can give you guys a little bit of uh, reassurance. rival drug dealers and they're going back and forth. Warrants have been written, they're in the process, excuse me, being written right now for three of the shooters from the other night. Um, we're working with Eustace in Lake County. Um, we have the marshals that are searching for one of the other outstanding warrants who was responsible for the murder in Ingram. It all stems from that. Um, this isn't something that I wouldn't feel scared walking my daughter down the street to go to BTW. It's, it's it's an isolated group of individuals who have a beef with each other. So please know that we're working. I've got officers sitting out there 24 hours, seven days a week, right in that area. We're constantly doing traffic with these guys. COVID has kind of tied our hands a little bit with our interaction with the community. We had not face to face as much as we normally would, but we're doing traffic stops. We're trying to get people with the guns, with the drugs. Um, we're working with Lake County and task force. Uh, Things are being done, but again, I mean, don't feel like you can't be safe in your own home. You're not a drug dealer. You guys aren't out there dealing drugs. These guys that are doing that, that's the life. And they brought it into our town, and we're trying to get it out. Yeah, I'll just add, um, uh, this uh, police force of ours is amazing. 
They are solving crimes. They are making arrests. They are issuing warrants. And they're putting the bad guys in jail. Uh, it's a shame that a handful of people moved into town about nine months ago, or ten months ago, and have created all this um, turmoil for us. But I can tell you this, um, we know who they are, the police is on it, and they are working with the state uh, uh, prosecutor, forensic, investigations. This is going to end. Uh, it's going to end very well. Uh, what happens in communities, and I've lived in a lot of them, small towns, you, everything's great, seven years goes by, and then a bad group of people move into your community, a handful, and uh, they create all the havoc. And that's what we've got going on here. Um, what's really cool about having a local police department, what I like about the best of having a local police department, is they know who these people are. And some of you know who these people are. And you know them by name. You know their parents. Uh, so we've got officers out there who know what's going on. They're making arrests. It does take time. You know, forensics, go to a lab. You've got to match it up. Prosecutor wants everything the way it needs to be done. Judges are involved. Jails are involved. Uh, but as far as Tiberi's doing his part, we've got the best police department in this whole area. I'm telling you, they are on it. They are making arrests, they are finding the evidence, and they are issuing warrants and putting people behind bars. And uh, this, thing will be, this thing will be done pretty soon. I am livid with the, uh, the amount of patience that we all have to have while, it, while we go through this. Um, but it will be done soon. Um, that's all I've got to add. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Mr. Bill, I'm going to leave you your next. Can you please say your name and address, and you have three minutes. I'm Freddie Bell, in fact, who fired West Main and Tiberius. <clears throat> I've known that gentleman. How old were you when you were in junior high football? Not that I knew anything about football, but I played football for me many, many years ago. A uh, couple, couple things. One was the shooting I wanted to talk about, the shootings I wanted to talk about. And, you know, it, things are happening at night. You've got the police cars out, but I wonder if you didn't have some officers on the street to just walking Main Street. You do have people, uh, different uh, clues and Buster Tubs and all the other places around. It would hurt to have one or two out, just not all night long, but just walking around seeing people that, so that they don't know that you're there. They can see the police cars, but they don't necessarily know that the officer's out walking around. Might be to let them get to know the people, let them get to know the business owners, because I don't think they know anybody. So that's one concern. Another concern is, is that some of the business owners are afraid to say it. I own uh, two buildings that have restaurants in them and bars. I have noticed and they have noticed that there's quite a few stops as the people are leaving. It is not that the various police department is stopping them either. It seems to be the sheriff's office that's, that's coming in and stopping them. And I don't know if there's a Y'all are working something out with them or whatever, you know, to help with the DUIs. But I had a uh, gentleman, uh, I came down to, to my office to write a bond, and a lady was out in, in a uh, parking lot not knowing what to do. And her uh, significant other basically was stopped. And this guy, the, the two of them, lived in Apaka. They want to relocate to Mary's. They said that specifically, both of them to me at two different times. And the concern is, is that as they're out, they were leaving, and they got pulled over because the lights were too high or, or whatever. Um, I think, Sarah, you might know a little bit about, about I think you were around that night. I don't think you had anything to do with the stop. And this guy is a engineer with uh, Mitsubishi Hitachi. And this isn't just some bum, the Hispanic guy. He's not some bum that wants to move in the area. But this might have stopped it. And I, I don't have any a problem with stopping people for DUIs. But Mount Moore went through this a number of years ago, that they would sit outside the bars and when somebody would come out, you know, it's like, well, they, they crossed the, the white bar, the stop bar, 
what happened? Who, who do, which one of you do not cross that stop bar as you're going home? Everybody does. But that's a good excuse to stop, to stop somebody. And now, then, then you just look and start fishing. But if that's all you saw them do, that doesn't mean they're drunk. That means they could be tired and coming home from work in the middle of the night. Like me. Now, I haven't been stopped yet. But that's one thing. Some of the, the bar owners are concerned about this. So, you might want to just check into it. And I think if they got out and they talked to the people, uh, I know Sarah's out a lot. I've talked to her a lot. And, uh, but I think if the officers periodically would stop in, say, is there anything we can do, you know, and uh, if there's any problem, give us a call and whatever. And if they just get each other and just be seen, it might stop the people from drinking maybe as much as they're doing or, or whatever. Maybe that's, I think that's about it. And <clears throat> I'm concerned about the young black kids too. So I know Mike, since he was that big, he was carrying, trying to carry the football for me. So not that I knew what to tell him to do. That's a long time ago. And we don't need anybody else getting shot. White, black, that makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. All right. Uh, Ms. Goss, uh, then uh, please come up. Say your name and address. You have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Ben Claus. I'm with the law firm of Buzz and Hargrove, which is on East Main Street and here at Tavares. I just want to expound a little bit on what we've just now heard as, you know, quelling the public's concerns. Where is leadership in this? Because this is the first day today anyone's even thought about saying, hey, public, don't worry. And just because I'm not a bad guy, just because I'm not a drug dealer, <coughs> those bullets do not have drug dealer names on them. They are flying can go anywhere. It can hit children. I think what Mr. Bell was getting on is some kind of community policing. We've sat by pretty quiet, but we can't do that anymore. And yes, I think community policing is important and is needed. We need people on the streets. And when someone does come forward as a witness, and they're either shamed or too afraid, and we don't stand up for that person, we've just told everybody not to speak. So something really needs to be done, and quite frankly, leadership needs to step it up and talk to people and tell them what's going on. That's all I have to say about this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, anyone else for Mr. Serdar? Otherwise, Mr. Serdar, you're the last show. You get three minutes, and I will cut you off, so. <laughs> David Serdar, Swinton Park, Florida. Uh, 66 Winter Group Drive, Swinton Park, Florida, 34731. Uh, you know, yesterday was election day. I was just putting signs back um, from the Lady Lake, uh, Leesburg, Clinton Park area. You know, candidate I hope I'm a retired captain of the Lake County Sheriff's Department. I lose cloth, but you know what? A house divided is no house at all. We have problems all over. Wilder just had the shooting. David Lyon lost his son, David Lyon Jr., a football star. I'm David. I played football. You know, it's happening everywhere. My dad was the principal in the white neighborhood in North Caldwell, and what? And uh, he helped everybody out. He took me. What are you doing? My ball games. I played basketball. Tall team North Carolina, Illinois. He helped. He got letters from doctors and lawyers because, well, that's what education does. You know, we got to support our police officers. Right here, this is the county seat. All over Lake County, the judges have the idiots that come in that are DUI. Well, I got a breath of life. In every car from the government. You know, what can you do? We, we can thank our police officers. What the idiots that are out there shoot, the bullets fly everywhere. I'm from Chicago, and there's 42 killings a week. You know, it's a terrible time in society. You know, it, I was with the sheriff last night. He asked if I had a meeting. With the eyes on, you know, things go on. Life goes on. Leaders leave. And lawyers, I grew up with lawyers. Judges, I grew up with judges. Um, I talked to Chris Castro today, the resident and sustainable building director, the mayor of uh, Buddy Dark. You know, cities work together. You work all together. You know the idiots are out there. You can't stop a neighborhood. In my neighborhood, a six-year-old guy, high up not, put gas through the whole house and lived out of parts. And it happened twice in the past five years in different neighborhoods. It's going to happen. We have to fight this, and it takes leaders with leaders. 
police officers to get things done. You know, there are idiots in society. And it's going to get worse. Maybe the time is now to start doing something. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sager. In fact, I didn't have to interrupt you. That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to reports. Uh, Mr. Jury. Uh, Avalon Park is going to have its um, on August 20th uh, at 4 to 6. Uh, they'll have their groundbreaking for um, their um, project in the uh, charter school parking lot. So if you are available and it doesn't conflict with your schedule, I will see you uh, at 4 o'clock to uh, celebrate their project. If not, no worries. Thanks. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Ms. Novak? I do have something. Um, this week, the election qualifying closed on Monday, and effective August 17th at 12 o'clock noon, the following candidates for the Office of Tiberi City Council have qualified to be placed on the ballot for the November 3rd municipal election. For seat 3, Walter B. Price Sr. and Royce Stevenson. Seat 5, Lori Fister and Debbie Steidinger. And Amanda Bogus is qualified to come with no opposition for seat 1 and will not be placed on the ballot and is considered to be elected without opposition. Congratulations. Thank you. I was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Lieutenant Corsi? Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything to report? Use the microphone. Do you have any more questions for Ms. Corsi? I'm sure she would stay after the meeting and address them personally. So, uh, Mr. Aldrich. No, just congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clark? Nothing to say. Thank you. Ms. Boobles? Nothing, Mayor. Mr. Dillon? Congrats, Mayor. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Mr. O'Keefe? All right. Mr. Tweedy? Oh, All right. Chief? Congratulations, Thank you, Ms. Houghton. Just a reminder for the budget of the hearings will be September 3rd, that's a Thursday, after the regular council meeting, and September 12th, or excuse me, September 16th. So September 3rd, September 16th. Well, so just for clarity, we have a meeting, a Wednesday meeting, on September 2nd, then a Thursday meeting on September 3rd, and then another Wednesday meeting on the 16th. Correct. Three meetings next month. And the budget public hearing will be at 5.05. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We have to, we can't hold the hearing until 5.05. So we usually recess if we need to and, you know. That. Thank you, Ms. Oden. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes, Mayor. The presentation of the draft of our new comprehensive plan will be on September 2nd. Wednesday meeting, September 2nd. Looking forward to it. Ms. Holt? Uh, Ms. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our officers out there. Their lives are on the line on a daily basis, and that doesn't, you know, I personally appreciate that. I just feel terrible that our city is going through this. The quality of life in our city is, it's a crisis as far as I'm concerned. Um, the protection of our residents, the protection of our, of our law enforcement, and also the economic implications. We've got developments that we approved today of folks wanting to move into this area eventually, they're going to be looking at these crime rates. And this may be something that may be happening for 10 months, a year, but we're going to have negative implications on that, you know, um, along the way. I'm really concerned. I hope our plan of action works. And if it doesn't, that we fix it. it. It hasn't been working so far. And I understand there's a lot that goes into it, but I am personally very concerned about it. I know I've been in Mr. Jory's office Quite, quite a few times in the last five days, you know, um, and I know he's doing what he can. I'm sure um, the chief is doing as well, but, but we need some peace, and we, we need to make sure our residents are feeling comfortable. And as far as it's a matter of it's a gang that's doing it or whatever the situation is, a stray bullet is a stray bullet, and it could get any one of the officers, any one of the residents, and that's what's going to be our, our problem and our downfall. So I, I just hope and pray that it's being addressed sooner than later, or we fix it some other way. And I thank you, each one of the police officers in our department. 
Uh, and then on a positive note, we always need to end with a positive quote. And even if you are on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. And that's Will Rogers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, Mr. Singer? I'm just glad to be back like a person. Mm -hmm. Part of the council, and congratulations. So, I am. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, Mr. Stevenson? I'm not going to be so quick with congratulations. We're friends. So. Yeah. Um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, you earned your kills in bed today, so that was a good thing. Mr. Jury, I don't know exactly uh, where this needs to be pointed, but um, I got a call. I have a friend out in Lake Francis. I got a call. Uh, talking about the construction, which I think is awesome. I've been out there a few times and I've seen it, and I think I know what's going on. They don't really know so much, or they appear not to know so much. Um, I can't get my mail. I can't get access. What if police or fire needed to get to my home? They can't even get to my home because the roads are blocked, so they are all unarmed. Uh, so well, we, we meet with the HOA president on a pretty regular base, basis, uh, so. I know we're doing that. I've been out there and spoke twice now. Um, so I'm surprised that uh, this president isn't aware of everything, but we'll look into it. Uh, if you can give me the name of the person and or the, or all of that, we'll go meet with him personally and all that. Yes, sir, that's just an outreach type thing as well. Thank you for Yeah, I know we're there. Um, I don't feel you're yeah, there. We have Phil's there daily. I've, I've, been, I've done at least two presentations to the whole HOA. I, I, maybe this resident's not at those meetings, uh, but maybe we're doing something wrong too, so we need to look into it. Not a problem. I told him, and I know I'm not speaking that class, but I told him I know police or fire need to get you. If you share me the name and of the resident, we'll, we, we'll reach out and see what's going on. Ms. Nister, um, congratulations. And uh, yeah, I really don't have anything today other than all the employees. I love you. These, these were just hard questions that I needed to, I needed to ask those today because this way they're on record and people can read it and they can see that we all are concerned. Just sometimes it's not easy up here. And I'm glad you're back, Mr. Singer, and I have the looming head behind me. Um, <laughs> it's hard to scary. You're right. And then you're also on the computer, so I'll be right up to you right there. I'm not going to have you in person. Um, also, uh, shout out to Mr. Clark's papers, saving the day at Wood Dixie. I'm sure they really appreciate that. I did do it. Um, yeah. But you know, take the credit. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I have nothing else to report, so with. No further ado, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Uh,